Hey guys, what's going on? This is Gematria Gaming, and uh, I'm here playing some Underrail. Uh, what I like to do is just start off real quick with a quick little decode as well of Gematria. For those of you that don't know, Gematria is the ancient practice of coding letters into numbers, numbers into letters, and uh, the powers that be in this world, the Jesuits, like to control everything that we see from social media to the news media. And they like to code everything according to the numbers. All the news is by the numbers. Everything that happens pretty much is by the numbers. And a uh, quick little decode here for you on some headline news. Uh, get out now. Monstrous Dixie Fire moves closer to small California town. Candor Fire threatens more communities. So these two fires, right, Dixie Fire and Candor Fire, pretty much it's talking about the Dixie Fire um, getting close to Susanville, California. And it also interestingly talks about Pacific Gas and Electric, who is uh, going to be shutting off power to 51,000 people because they're afraid of starting more fires or whatever. Uh, you've also got Grizzly Flats, which is a small town that was taken out by the Caldor Fire. Look, at the end of the day, these fires are all man-made. Uh, what they are trying to do is take out these smaller towns, burn them to the ground to force people to move into larger cities to get the population uh, more centralized. So that way it's easier to keep tabs on everybody, control people, what have you. So this is uh, Gematria here. Um, if you don't know, as I said, it is putting letters into numbers, numbers into letters. You've got the English ordinal and the full reduction, the reverse ordinal and the reverse full reduction. Pretty much words forwards and words backwards. Um, it's got cipher down here so you're aware of what each letter corresponds to as far as for number. And a real quick and easy one for you guys is to understand communities, okay? So... These communities, that's what smaller towns are called. They're called communities, right? So in Gematria, communities equals 51. Wildfires as well equals 51. That's what these are all being blamed on, being wildfires. So, you know, you could take that as these, these numbers match. So communities, wildfires, it's a pretty good narrative that they push. Um... Also, interestingly to note, I'm going to go ahead and do a control F so you guys can see the number 64 here. You've got Grizzly Flats and Susanville, which are the two communities that are referenced in this, uh, in this article. Susanville and Grizzly Flats, right? Um, they are the same in Gematria, right? 64. Also interesting to know is 62, right? So Dixie Fire and Calder Fire equals 62. Grizzly Flats equals 62 as well. And um, that is where, you know, this city, this town that was supposedly taken out by one of these fires. Also keep in mind, Global Warming equals 62, uh, which is... You know, global warming is the bigger picture that they try to pin all these wildfires on, you know, climate change, et cetera, et cetera. Also interesting is uh, 55, right? Because Calder Fire and Dixie Fire and West Coast equal 55. Um, these fires are happening on the West Coast in California, uh, as you guys are probably aware of. So, look, the probability of all these letters and numbers matching up to form coherent words, words that are specifically mentioned in the news, in the media, uh, even though you're using four ciphers, it's really, really low probability. I mean, you, it, it's, it's almost impossible for it to just be a coincidence. Um, it might just be a coincidence, but, you know, all of the evidence over the years has pointed to it. There's a lot more stuff out there. I'm just doing quick little snippets. One last thing I want to show real quick, too, and then we'll get into the game, is Pacific Gas and Electric, right? So that's a company that's shutting off power to 51,000 people in 18 counties, which those are interesting numbers, too, but regardless. So Pacific Gas and Electric, right? If you look down here, it equals 112. Uh, in Gamatria, there's also date numerology. Things can be tied to dates. So today's date is is the uh, eighth, or sorry, uh, August seventeenth, twenty twenty one. 
And if you look down here, there's different ways to get different numbers from the date, you know, by the way you add or divide or subtract or multiply the numbers. Well, down here, look what you've got. You've got the date, which is 8-1-7-21, comes out to 1-1-2, matches up with Pacific Gas and Electric who are in the news on this date as well. So that's just pretty much a, a small thing real quick with uh, with Gamatria, you know. Not a not a huge deal or anything like that, right? But um, let's go ahead and get into the game. We're going to be playing Under Rail. Uh, might be a little bit lesser known of a game. I know it's a pretty it's pretty it's a really good game. It's I don't think that many people really play it. Truthfully, I think it's a little bit lesser known. Uh, but it's a great game. It's like a Fallout One, Fallout Two type game where you. Everything is a bunch of text, a bunch of reading, a lot of different skills and everything to, to go through as well. So let's make sure we've got this going on. All right, and we are in under rail um all right so what i'm gonna do is we're actually gonna do a new build but let me just save this one real quick because i think my last thing was a quick save and we'll do a new one for this one is a hammer build I'm um, not like super good at this game, not super well versed at it or anything, but we're going to be playing um, uh, an unarmed monk and probably going to be going on uh, on dominating difficulty. It's it's pretty, pretty crazy. It's pretty hard. So an unarmed monk build, when you're playing this game, everything's pretty much uh, very specific on min-max. So you've got to pretty much build your entire character specifically to how, to like whatever class you're going to play. you got to make sure all your stats are right, or else you're not going to survive. You're going to die. Um, so... One of the best monk builds that you can actually get is, uh, let's see. Well, actually, let's change our guy first. Um, we can kind of make him look like however we want to. There's like a million different things to choose from. What would a monk really look like? I don't know. Does it, I think that looks like a monk. <laughs> that guy's like kind of like monkish. Yeah, okay. Um, sorry, just got to make sure you've got, uh, everything kind of put up here. Okay. Hmm. So in here we've got Let's see. 
here we go. The Bruce Lee build, right? And this is this is pretty much like your total setup for uh having like the best monk, not able to get hit, all that good stuff. So how you want to start off is with six strength, ten dex, right? So we're gonna take our constitution down, which Really, when you're playing on dominating, it it really it almost doesn't matter because you're gonna get killed a lot anyway. Take our perception down, take our will down, um, and our agility up to nine. And as far as for your skills, obviously we're gonna have melee maxed out here at the beginning. Uh, you can start off by building some of your stuff here. You've got guns, throwing crossbows, and melee. Monk is going to use melee because this is for uh, unarmed attacks. Helps you hit more often. Then we're also going to do throwing because you're going to throw everything that you possibly can when you're on dominating. Um, that includes like grenades. Uh, it includes throwing knives, things like that. Which there's a bunch of different grenades and you can do different stuff with knives. This game's really involved. It's really good. Uh, then you've got dodge, right, which helps you avoid melee attacks, and then evasion, which helps you avoid gun fire and stuff like that. These two, as you start pumping them up, really help. It makes the uh, makes the build really good. Uh, then you've got your mechanics, which it's using crafting weapons, armors, and stuff like that, which you're definitely going to want. And you want to try to max out mechanics and tailoring as much as possible because that helps you make the best stuff and then biology um what this helps you do is uh craft poison sorry poisons and stuff like that um super useful to have chemistry as well uh it helps you do uh explosives and stuff like that so you're going to be making a lot of your own stuff pretty much when you're playing through this game so that's your that's your beginning points that you're gonna have the stuff you're gonna do in the beginning, and then you've got feats, right? So feats are you can choose two at the beginning, and then every couple levels you can choose another feat. These are like they give you extra skills or special boosts to your uh, to your stats, much like Fallout. If you guys ever played Fallout, you could get feats, and you want to start off with sprint. Uh, which you activate it and it grants you 30 movement points for two turns. So you've got movement points and action points. Uh, the movement points are really useful because it allows you to, to hit stuff and then move, get out the way, pretty much. And then Opportunist, uh, which is another really, really good uh, uh, feat. So it actually increases damage against rooted, stunned, and cast and capacitated targets by 25% and against slowed targets by 15% with weapons, unarmed attacks, and throwing knives. So this build is all about stunning people. You want to, you know, stun your opponents. You want to be able to uh, get that extra damage in because it's all about getting the most damage possible in there. So it looks like everything we've got is pretty much set up. We're a monk. Strength, dexterity, agility are all up there. Intelligence is up there too. Our skills are set up. Our feats are set up. We hit accept and we're in the game. This is going to be terrifying. We're playing on dominating difficulty. All right, last topic of course, earthquake repairs. Okay, let's continue. What's the situation at the South Tunnel? Got to dig deeper to plant the explosives or else we risk more damage to the tunnel. Almost everyone is working shifts up there. Shouldn't be too long now. He nods. Gorski, how's the security looking? This is Gorski. Got one man at the cave exit and that's enough as far as I'm concerned. Automated security is strong there and as long as we know the crossroad and the cove are clear, no one can sneak up on us. Okay, and the crossroad in the cove, that's somewhere. Also got one man at the underpassages, and he's been ordered not to open the gate no matter what. 
The last thing we need right now are those bloody lurkers sneaking up on us. Everyone else is up at the platform securing workers and tunnels. Good, good. If no one has anything else to add, we will conclude this council meeting. Actually, just one more thing, in case you weren't informed already, I admitted a new citizen to the station. That monk fellow who... I think they're talking about us. Yes, I think he will be a good addition to the station. He and Vensel are still at the range, but they should be done any moment now, I believe. You put too much trust in your tests, Tanner. All I care about is how he handles live action, not how many points he got. Well, we'll find out soon enough. Best put him to work immediately. We need all hands on deck right now. So this is Tanner, Had Hadrian Tanner. Indeed, that is all, Vera Gorski. Okay. So this is Vensil. An unexpected yawn erupts, interrupts Vensil. He instinctively raises his left hand to cover his mouth, forgetting that he's wearing a respirator. A tiny smile creeps up on your face due to this very fact, yet you understand that, that after so many hours of testing, these kind of lapses tend to sneak up on people. He soon continues. Excuse me. All in all, monk, as far as I'm concerned, we're done here. Uh, I've got a few other things to do, but unless you'd like to have another go at the testing range, you have no reason to stay here any longer. Um, alright, so I'm going to skip the tutorial. I can kind of just go over things as they happen. Uh, he says, I have no doubt you'll like it, and I have yet to see any newcomers complain. Nothing more to say than congratulations again, Monk, and welcome to the Southgate Station. Go and get some rest. All right, so here we are. This is us. You can actually zoom in if you want to see all the sweet, sweet pixels. Um, you can highlight everything that you can interact with as well by pressing tab. It's pretty nice, pretty useful. And it's a, you know, you point and click, you interact with stuff. You got your personal computer. Security scope, monk, personal. Access level, full. Personal messages or exit. Let's see personal messages. We got four. Read message, key card from Wayne. Title, key card, author, Wayne. Hi, I fixed your door, so the key card should work fine now. In case you haven't found it yet, it's in your desk. See you around. Wow, what a nice gentleman. Number two, read message, whoops, from Gorin. Title, whoops, author, Gorin. Okay, he probably just didn't mean to send that to us. Uh, read message, Skull Smasher, from Gorin. Title, Skull Smasher, author, Gorin. Hey, heard about Skull Smashers released from prison? Seen it on Arena Now moments ago. Who, okay, who the hell is Gorn and why do I care? <laughs> about people being... I don't know. Anyway, read message. Welcome from Tanner. Here we go. This might actually be something. Title, welcome, author, Tanner. Congratulations, you have passed all the tests we presented you in the past weeks and have now obtained full citizenship in Southgate Station. On behalf of the entire community, I welcome you into our fold. Visit me in my office in the commons as soon as you've rested so we can discuss your duties in the coming days. Cool. All right, so we read through all that. We know that there's a key card in here. We've also got SGS credits. This is the internal currency of the Southgate Station. So there's a couple different currencies in this game um while you're at southgate station they only well they don't only accept the credits but it's pretty much all you're going to get at the beginning you can also hit the light switch to turn on the lights that's pretty cool we've got the locker here it's got mechanical repair kit a patching kit a flare and an anti-thermatic or sorry anti-thermic rat hound leather overcoat so the way that things work in this game is there's durability on everything. Uh, things like weapons, you use mechanical repair toolkits on. Things like armor, we're going to take a patching kit. Luckily, we're a monk and we're going to use our fists. So, for the most part. But you, you, there are gloves and stuff that you can wear, so you're going to want to get a mechanical repair kit. If it's got flares, you can light stuff up, makes it easier to see enemies that are hidden. And then you've got this overcoat. It says this overcoat is made of rat hound leather. No matter how hard you try to wash it out, the faint stench of this filthy creature remains. Its surface material can somewhat reflect the high radiant loads produced by fire. Then you've got resistances down here. 
mechanical is like just normal damage that you take from armed attacks, unarmed attacks, melee attacks, and uh, uh, bullets as well. Then it's got 18% heat and 6% cold, so uh, that you can take heat damage from uh, incendiary rounds. Or there's a there's a like a magic system to this game called Psy. You get Psy abilities. They can do cold and hot and stuff like that. Uh, when you equip it, you're immune to burning, which is kind of cool. It's got a 15% armor armor penalty penalty. What that stuff does is for like when you're when you're sneaking, uh, the the heavier armor that you wear, the more penalties you get to your sneaking, uh, and also like your movement and everything like that because it's heavier, so you can't sneak around and it's takes more energy to move around. Then uh, also when you equip it, your persuasion is decreased by three. It's because it's made out of rat hound leather. And uh, it's it stinks, so people don't like you as much. And then your stealth is decreased as well because it's anti-thermic, so it's uh, reflective. And I don't think being reflective is very good for being sneaky. So you take all that. You can open up your inventory here. You've got a little paper doll type thing. You've got your shirt and pants. You can replace that with your anti-thermic overcoat. And then also in here in the locker, you've got bandage and health hypo. hypo. Uh, bandage, it'll restore health over time, but you have to be over 40% health in order for it to work. And then a health hypo is like your, your healing. It heals 40 points. It's got a kind of a long cooldown though. Everything's, well, not everything, but most things have cooldowns in this game. Um, the bandages you can't use in combat. Obviously the health hypos you can. This is your guy right up here. Uh, it says that you're focused, so it makes them more effective in ranged combat. When you move, that little thing goes away, and then it'll pop back up after you're not moving for a little bit. And this is your health down here, the red bar. Let's see you know how much health you have. You're probably going to see that bar go down to zero a shit ton of times with me, but whatever. What can you do? So to... When you start off, you kind of want to, well, you can go faster, actually. And also, I want to kind of switch up my abilities here. So, burst, I don't I don't need it because I'm not going to be using a gun. It's just, it's just like if you want to shoot rapid fire. But I do want to have sprint on here. Sprint is really useful to have. I'm not going to do pickpocket because I'm not going to invest in pickpocket. And then lock. No, you don't ever really lock anything. So that's our abilities so far. Nothing too crazy, right? All right, head up to the elevator. And this is Southgate Station. It's pretty much set up in a level system. So you've got levels one through nine. Uh, the nine is like level nine is the bottom, what leads out to caves and everything. And then level one is actually uh, the lower under rail. So this still isn't even like the top of the world map or anything like that. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go to the armory and shooting range and try to get some stiff. So we've got Lucas. Uh, a short man rises from behind his desk with a grenade case in his hands. The heavy case meets the top of the desk with a thud, raising your eyebrows, which in turn makes the man's face turn into a smile. He removes his glove and shakes your hand with a strong, perhaps too strong, grip before addressing you. Don't worry, monk. I ain't gonna blow us up. Nope. Anyway, Vincent told me you'll be staying with us for a while. Guess so. Well, friend, make yourself at home. Just so you know, this game is like really dialogue intensive. Like you have a bunch of different options that you can choose for dialogue if you want to as well. Um, so you can ask him, can I have my weapon back? Of course, it was the, um, yeah, five mil pistol and some ammo, if I recall correctly, right? This one. He produces a pistol that is in such bad condition, people would pay to get rid of it. So this is like your first kind of, well, one of your first options or opportunities to try and use persuasion to get stuff. Um, you pretty much can, well, since we're going to be doing a monk build, we're not going to use the gun anyway, so it really doesn't matter. And I didn't put any points into Persuasion, so yeah. But what you can do is say, I don't need that, I just need a knife, right? It's like, then who's, oh, this has got to be Newton's gun. Ha, huh, my bad. Here you go, he hands you your weapon. 
there. With that out of the way, my interest in a couple more things. So, let's see. He said, one sec. Mind doing me a small favor. Harland, one of our security officers, has requested an extra auto turret over at the under passages exit. That, and a trainload of ammo, as if he's preparing for a lurker invasion. Um, so you can say maybe he is, did he tell you why he needs all this? Just tell me where to find him, I'll see if I can get the chance. So to say, okay, um, did he tell you why he needs all this? Quote, he needs it, but why concretely? Now that's something I can't get out of him. Heh, <laughs> I'll be damned if he even knows it himself. Harland, he tends to get to him. Hmm. Paranoid. Oh, sorry. He tends to get him paranoid from time to time. I suppose watching over dark hallways nonstop gets to a guy after a while. And then he gets all quacky. <laughs> quacky. Quacky. Like a Quaker. Or a Hopper. Scared. You dig? Is that a Quacker? Quaker? Quacker? I don't know. So just tell me where to find him. There's an entrance to the underpassages at the metro station above us. Can't miss it. Go down the stairs and you'll find him there. See if whatever spooked him this time is a genuine concern. And if so, I'll send him everything he needs. It's just that I don't want us hauling all this ordinance back and forth because of a couple of thugs or a rat hound. Got it. Okay, let me see your stock. Let's see what you got. Okay, so... I think the the decent thing about playing on the harder difficulty is it opens up more stuff to you, like right from the get-go, like more equipment and everything, because they know, hey, you, you're going to need all the help you can get, I think. So let's see what we've got here. So you've got blueprints where you can actually make make stuff. Um, if you're gonna make bullets, you know, which no, because I'm not gonna use a gun. Frag grenade case, hand grenade, a mine, uh, pistol, shiv, shotgun, shotgun shells, SMG, sniper rifle, tactical vest, and a thing grenade case. Interesting that you can get a sniper rifle blueprint right off the bat, like. Those are pretty powerful. Um, I'm not going to get any of those, though, right now. I don't think I really need them. It'd be nice to have a belt, too, but I'm not really too hung up on it. Hmm. So I've got an anti insulated anti-rifle overcoat. But it's got 60 armor penalty penalty because it's it's really heavy. It's 18 pounds versus this. It's six. There's also a vest. Ah, uh, well, whatever. I don't think I really need anything from this guy right now. He does have a nice knife, but. Oh, he's also got these. 12 AP. What's this cost? 12 AP. Hmm. Let's see. What to do, what to do. I think... We might just get these, just to have them, and then I'll sell them in the knife. And give them some credits. Alright, so now we've got our Fists. Oh boy. So level three is the commons and cantina. So we'll go down here.
And I know that there is, um, we're going to want to take Psy abilities on here. Let's just check real quick and see on the uh, community page. So I think we can... translate this because there's a guide for it but it's in uh, Russian and unfortunately I don't speak Russian but I think that I think there is a way to uh to get this like in English. Let's see. Okay. All right, here we go. All right. So grenades, traps, light armor and leather boots with bleeding effect. Okay, so you want to make you know, all kinds of different stuff. Persuasion, the difficult situation is better resolved by peace. For example, on the quest with shields given by Grosky. So we don't use invisibility. There's no side skills. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's really, that's pretty much it. Um, By frag grenades and the best cheap knife. Okay. Well, since we're not going to get any psi abilities, I guess we can go over here. You can also speed up the walking and stuff like that in this game, which is pretty nice. Pretty good quality of life thing. You can also go in the cantina, and if you shut the doors, no way can see you, and you can just steal all this food and food is good because it gives you bonuses and everything that lasts for a decent amount of time which is really useful to have when you're playing on uh, the hardest difficulty the man behind the desk is Herod Hadron Tanner the counselor who admitted you into Southgate station even though your first encounter with him Oh, even during your first encounter with him, he struck you as an unusual-looking individual. Setting aside his impressive stature, one finds it difficult not to notice how his thick, bushy hair and beard envelop most of his head. That, in addition to his opaque glasses covering his eyes, which you've never noticed him without, means that you can see very little of his face and its expression. 
His somewhat dirty scavenger outfit, which he wore earlier as well, clashes with the clean, finely furnished office, suggesting that Tanner probably does most of his work in the field. As soon as he finishes typing, he raises his head and reaches out to shake your hand. His big hand, tucked into dark brown gloves, makes yours seem like that of a child in comparison, and you especially feel his large fingers to be twice as thick as yours. His deep voice feels distant and calming when he addresses you. Congratulations once again, Monk, and welcome to our small community. You scored very well on our tests. No small feat, that. I'm sure you'll turn out to be a valuable and respected citizen. But more importantly, I hope you'll find peace and kinship here, which are so hard to come by in the chaos surrounding us. I'll try my best not to disappoint. I have yet to get to know the other South Gators, but I have a good feeling I'll fit in with the rest of the crowd pretty well. And is there going to be a welcoming party or something? So we'll do this. I'll try not to disappoint. That is good to hear. I hope the earthquake didn't disturb you much and you were able to rest a bit from all the testing, for you have much work to do today. Events have transpired that require your attention. Are you ready for some field work? Do I get to shoot stuff? Ready and able? As ready as it will ever be? How much damage did the earthquake cause? Work already? Let's ask how much damage the earthquake caused. Not much damage to the station itself. There were no casualties, fortunately. Regardless, the railroad tunnel has caved in, so we're cut off until the rubble has been cleared up. It is nothing that you should be that you should be concerning yourself with at this point in time. Now back to the business at hand. First, you can have your weapon back. Lucas at the armory should have it. And while you're there, you might want to drop by the shooting range. Since you'll be doing some field work today, it might not be a bad idea to warm up in case things get ugly. Speak to Grosky if he's there. He'll help you set up for some practice sessions. However, that is entirely up to you. Okay. And what is this field work you mentioned? Down in the tunnels below our station, just to the north of Crossroad Caves, lies a series of abandoned outposts. These outposts were built by another station a long while ago for the purpose of scouting and defense. In time, they fell to decay. I want you to retake them so that they may once again serve the same purpose. However, in order to do so, you will need to activate the main power generator that's located inside one of them. Harold from the engineering sector thinks he knows how to get the generator operational, so he should be your first stop after we are done here. As far as I'm aware, there are a total of five outposts plus the one with the generator. I don't know if it's possible to activate all of them, but try to activate at least three. You may also want to talk to Jonas at the Crossroad Watch Post. It's down in the tunnels just outside the station. You'll be passing through there anyway. He's one of our most experienced scavengers, and he's probably seen more of South Underrail than any of us here. He'll surely have some useful, useful advice for you. So, you could ask, why are we retaking him? Is an important strategic position should certain factors attempt, oh, sorry, factions attempt to encroach further into our zone of control. Besides, cleaning them all out will also push some of the unwanted wildlife further away from the Southgate Station, so it is also beneficial in that regard. All right, wildlife. I understand that a few packs of rat hounds moved into the area, but you best talk to Jonas regarding that. He'll have more details. He knows the area inside and out. Oh, and one more thing before you go. Pasquale, our station's chief physician, wanted to see you, so you should probably pop down to his office in the medical sector when you have the time. Okay, bye. All right. Um, so you've got, let's see, administration and library, private quarters, medical and psionics, engineering and cyber labs, agronomy and pens. So let's see what they got in the uh, engineering, because I, uh, I think I might want to find that. I mean, I'm either going to have to go back and buy that knife, but this guy might have some too. As he turns around to face you, you immediately notice there is something off with this man. His face is pale and hairless. He is missing one of his eyes, and instead, wires protrude from his eye socket, traveling over the side of his face and disappearing down the back of his neck. The other eye is almost colorless, with the pupil so contracted that you question whether he can even see at all. He speaks with a calm and even voice. Hello, monk. I am Ezra. I act as the head of network administrator and chief of the entire engineering sector. Let's see if he has any good stiff. Uh, so he's got... 
taser, which is good. You want a taser, that's for sure. And he's got some batteries too. Should probably only get like 10 of them. Probably can't afford much more than that. Oh my gosh, I can't even afford that. Okay. So I can afford five batteries and a taser blueprint, which we're, we're going to need it for sure. We're going to need taser. And we need an electroshock generator and an energy core. All right, so let's talk to Harold. Howdy, you must be the new guy. Name's Harold. I'm in charge of this little workshop here. Nice to meet you. I'm Monk. So you're looking for something specific or just looking around? Tanner tells me you know of a way to restore power to the outpost to the north. He nods. Right, I remember taking a look at the power generator there a while back. I couldn't do anything about it back then because I didn't have this. He rummages through the boxes that are on the table before producing something resembling an energy core. Here, it's a flux controller. If you insert it into the slot at the front of the power generator, it should get it running again. After that, you ought to be able to reactivate all the outposts. I'm afraid you'll have to do that manually, though. You see, each of them has a switch that cuts off the power in case of a hazard. I got it. Thanks. I'll give it a try. Let's see what he's also got to trade, just in case. So he's got recycle item, which that's really useful to have, but I can't afford that right now. He's also got batteries too. Okay, nothing really. I need to figure out how to get some moolah so I can... Uh... Got medical and psionics. So that way I can get that knife, because that was a really good knife. I should have bought that instead of the gloves, but whatever. What can you do? There's Pasquale. Uh, hello, Monk. First of all, let me congratulate you on your admittance to our little station. I'm sure you'll love it here. It's good that you came. I actually want to talk to you about some of the results from all the tests we did earlier. Is there something wrong with me? No, no, quite the contrary. Sorry if I scared you. You see, test results show that you have a certain amount of psionic potential. You mean like I can read people's minds? Ooh. How much potential? I'm not derailed. So, he chuckles. No, no, not really. Well, not yet anyway. Perhaps one day if you train your mind, right? Allow me to explain what psionic potential really is. It's a relatively rare, inheritable, complex genetic trait that triggers development of certain otherwise latent components in the brain. It allows a person to perform some subtle psionic implications, such as influencing the minds of others, as well as not some not-so-subtle ones, such as causing radical temperature changes and telekinetic manipulations. Wow. So, since we're not going to be doing that, we're going to say this all sounds disturbing. I don't want any psionic mumbo-jumbo going on in my head. As you wish. If you change your mind, let me know. Okay. Well, let's take this. We got a health hypo and a bandage. Like I said, probably going to be using those a lot. Okay, so... Let's go to the lower under rail part and talk to... Uh, That guy, whatever his name was, Har Harland or something. Let me just make sure to do with my skills. Okay. So we're just going to try to get enough XP to level up here. Okay, we got some leather boots, which is good. Agility increased by one, stealth increased by three. These boots are made of cave hopper leather. They are padded with soft foam. Oh, whatever, it's better than nothing, I guess, right? Got a rag.
Music's pretty cool in this game, too. Alright, so there ain't nothing over there. Man, I hate how there's like such long loading between areas. I mean, come on, man. It's 2021. It should just load instantly. So here's Harland. He come to a short, bull-necked man staring at his security monitors. One of them switched off and showing nothing but the reflection of his own concerned face, as well as an unintelligible figure walking up behind him. His eyes widen as he recoils as soon as he becomes aware that he is not, as lo not alone. One moment passes, then he speaks. Woo! He scared the hell out of me, man! He pulls down his respirator. Ah, don't you, don't you sneak up like that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, it's okay, but damn. I'm Harlan. He briefly inspects you, and then peers over your shoulder. Hey, you hear about my auto turret? Yeah, Lucas sent me here to talk to you about that. That man, he's not taking this seriously at all. Look, I got a situation here. Somebody took down one of my cameras right outside. They want me blind, you see, so they could attack and break through the gates. And have you seen those? They're not the big, thick, split gates Malcolm's got at his checkpoint. No, no. I've I've got a pair of oversized trays between me and the lurker hordes. All I want is some extra ammo for my turret. And one more turret. It's dangerous out there. Well, if it's not the lurker hordes, but... He crosses his arms, but what? You can say a common thug, a camera just fell off the wall, a lurker gang, or something else. What if it is a whole gang? He gives you a blank stare. Have you even been outside? Are you derailed? I'm not going out there. Then I'll go. You will? Sure, for a price. Ah, don't worry. If you help me out, I'll throw in some credits for your troubles, okay? I can't open the gates, so you're going to have to go around. Go back to the metro station and go north until you run into one of the underpassage entrances. You take it from there, and I'll be waiting here. And be careful. It's dangerous out there. Make sure you're ready. On the job, man. All right. Let's see what he's got here that we can take. He's got a straight Mahete blade mold, which whatever, I'll sell it. Uh, throwing can knife, nice. That could come in handy. And nothing else, really. Alright, so you've got utility slots here. Um, you can get a lot more, but we'll put the throwing knife on that utility slot so we can use it in combat. And I'm not, I'm not really going to uh, go find the camera yet. You got to be really careful when you're playing in uh, in the dominating mode. But let's see if I can go to back to the armory in the shooting range. Yeah, this is a pretty nice knife. Oh, I won't be able to afford it though, no way. Yeah, not even close. So, I'll probably... I don't know, we're just gonna wing it. We'll see, we'll see what happens, man. We're probably gonna die. We're probably gonna die. A oh, lot. But I might be able to sell some of this stuff at least. What's up? Well, yeah, he'll, he'll buy that off me at, at the very least. For 11. That's not bad. So I've got 34 credits. Okay. Let's go down to the cave tunnel exit and docks. This is Malcolm. Oh, this is the guy that he was talking about that has the heavy security. 
The man greets you with a warm smile. Ah, Monk, good to finally meet you. I'm Malcolm. How can I help you? I need to get out into the caves. You didn't get your access card yet, right? Yes, yeah, should be around here somewhere. He starts looking through the drawers. There it is. He produces a red access card and passes it to you. Now listen here. This is the procedure. When you want to leave, you let me know and I'll open the inner gate. Then you step into the transition room. Then I close the inner gate and open the outer gate and off you go. All right, now when you want to get back in, use the card I gave you on the console outside. Stand in front of the camera so I can confirm it's you. Then I'll open the outer gate. Earlier, we used to do bioscanning every time someone passed, but since no one ever showed up positive, it became a nuisance. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. So you're going away? Yeah, let's go, man. He nods. Oh, and here's a tip for you. If you find yourself surrounded by rat hounds, use flares to scare them away. They'll be back, though, so try not to stick around. Thanks, I'll keep that in mind. All right. So we've got a whole thing here with that going out. Alright, so this is our first foray into what's probably going to be a tough time. Well, here's old Jonas, the guy he was talking about. An old man wearing an old coat, old pants, and old boots. He's just all around old. Introduces himself with an amiable smile. Oh, it's the young monk. Oh, that's going to be my rap name. Off to do some hunting. What is this place? What are you doing here? I hear you're very knowledgeable of the tunnels, and I can use some advice. Been crawling through them tunnels all my life. What do you want to know? What can you tell me about the abandoned outpost nearby? The nearest one is just north of the Crossroads Watch. They stretch to the east and to the west from there. They were built by Omega Station, but are somewhat in ruins since we put them out of business. Plenty of rat hounds there now. Oh, if you are heading there, could you do me a favor? I was scavenging near those outposts a while back, and I think I lost my old digital watch there. I was about It was about this big and made of metal. It doesn't have a strap, so I keep it in my pocket. It must have fallen out somewhere. Could you keep an eye out for it? If you bring it back, I'll make you a good bargain for it. Alright, metal detector's on. I'll have your watch back in no time. I'm not getting my hopes up, but good hunting. How much damage did the earthquake do to the surrounding cave tunnels? Well, all the passageways have caved in. I'd use dynamite to clear them up, but Tanner confiscated all of it to make it available for clearing up the south tunnel. Can't say I blame him. The metro is more important. The passage to the lake is clear, though, so if you're up for some fishing or something... Nice. Okay. Okay. So, what is this place? This is a crossroad watch. The only way to get into our station from the tunnels is through here. What are you doing here? Just sorting through some goods I scavenged today. Want to take a look, see if there's something you like before I take it back to the station? I can offer a fair bargain. I can do that later. I don't have any money, man. But there is lockers here that we can get stuff out of. And he won't care too much if we open them up and whatever. Ooh. Spooky. All right. So let's try our hand at going over here. There's some stuff in these barrels, which is kind of useful. All right, so. We're just gonna go at it here. So there's mole crickets, which believe it or not, these guys are actually, they're pretty tough. I'm gonna move back to try and draw them further back here. Eh. Try and draw them, there we go, a little bit closer.
Oh boy. <laughs> They're coming after me, man. The mole crickets. Nice. Nice, okay, so we got some XP there. Slowly but surely getting our way up. Okay, signpost. East, Camp Harthor. South is Junkyard, and then Mushroom Cove as well is down south here. Let's see what's in the barrels. Okay, so this is good. This is decent. There's some there's actually some decent stuff here in the barrels. Which that's what it's kinda all about, man. You're just you're so tapped for money. All right. Oh, cool. More of the mole crickets, people, things, or whatever. Um, go back a little bit. Let them come to me. Oh man, they're getting me. I'm almost leveled up though. When I get to level two, things will get a little bit easier. You know how it goes. So you can do M to bring up your map too. Um, I usually have it like just centered in on the character, but when it's got like that orange highlight around it, that's where you know, you know, you know that that's where what room you're in or whatever, what quadrant you're in. And you can kind of go in and out of each screen. And once you do, it'll kind of bring a little yellow or orange line there. So you know where it's where it heads you out to. Or where it brings you to, I should say. All right, we've got more mole crickets here. This is great. Hopefully I can level up off these guys though. That'd be kind of cool. Hmm. I might level up right here. Nice. Okay. Cool. So level two. Um, so in our skills, we're going to want to get up to Now we're pretty much going to want to just level up everything the same. As far as what this is saying. Da -da -da. So yeah, we're gonna 
just go up in here and just follow the same method of leveling. So mechanics, we can take up to 40. Chemistry, tailoring, electronics, biology. So we'll just keep those a little bit higher for right now. Then we can take another feat. And at level two, we want Nimble, which reduces armor penalty by 15% and grants 15% bonus to dodge and evasion if your armor penalty is at zero, which is really good. So right now, theoretically, we are at, uh, well, I think we'd still be at a little bit of an armor penalty because this is 15% here, but whatever, it'll be worth it. Oh man, these mole crickets are serious. Oh nice, got crit. And I genuinely just want to, uh, genuinely want to just loot everything that you possibly can. Uh, let's back up a little bit, bring them towards us more. So this is the combat, you know, it's, uh, It's turn-based, you move tiles, you've got your action points and your movement points here. Um, down here at the bottom is like a toolbar where when you get more abilities and stuff, you can activate them from down there. Like World of Warcraft type stuff. This guy's got really good stuff on him. Wow. Hey, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm in. Ooh, okay, and this guy's got brass knuckles, interestingly enough. Which we might uh, we might just want to use those. Let's see if this helps us with our with our fighting endeavors. Oh man, I think it uses a little bit more AP. Uh. Let's see. Yeah, it's it's one more AP. It's 13 verse 12. It sounds like there's a freaking Psy Beetle down here. Oh, or uh, a zero day, yeah. That's not good. We want to get the hell out of here. Those things are no freaking joke. That'll kill us right now. Okay. A quick save. Just because you never know. Watch. Oh, dude, these things are so nasty. Oh, come on. Well, I'm surprised I even was able to kill it. I'm not going to lie to you. But I'll do it because you get extra XP. Red Dream Mushroom is good.
Now, there's also like little things like that hidden around the world where if you're, you know, if you got the right agility or strength or whatever, you can do some pretty cool stuff. But I think that's pretty much it for here. So I got to freaking move on. There's rocks over there that we would be able to break down. There might be some more. I can hear more of the, the side beetles, but definitely a, a ways away from being able to take care of the rocks and stuff. All right, so what I'll probably do is we'll head back to Southgate Station. Sell, sell all this stuff that we got. And uh, well, I guess uh, try to try to see if we can't uh get some more get some useful stuff there i think like molotovs and grenades stuff like that are pretty useful so let's see what we can sell first oh yeah perfect we want to see ammo we're not using ammo and look at that shotgun Nice. He also wants the reloads too. Shotgun shell. Okay, 170 credits. Now we've got 204. We're uh, we're we're working our way up. We're working our way up. So I could get I could get frag grenades. Could hmm. Oh no. Well, let's let's see what else we got going on here first. You come up to a rangy man with long hair who is cutting open the head of a large, monstrous creature, formerly an untamable beast, but is it is now but a stiff volunteer to post -port, post mortem dissection to science. And soon enough, the man makes the final incision, after which he pushes his hand through to extract a single long, sharp spine. Greenish, sticky fluid dribbles out of the opening and all over the floor and the, as the man wipes the spine clean before laying it aside and that is the moment which he notices you careful you don't want to get in contact with its toxin he returns to cutting through the creature as he talks to you <clears throat> my name is quentin don't bother introducing yourself and know who you are you're a monk and you just got admitted to the station i'd shake your hand but you can see why that wouldn't be a good idea Do you have anything to trade? What type of creature is that? What are you doing? What's in that room over there? God, ask so many damn questions. What kind of creature is that? It's a burrower. It's one nasty creature that digs around, laying eggs all over the place. There are more numerous, deeper underground, but you can still find a few roaming the lower underrail and the surrounding caves. If you meet one, be careful. It will spit thick, hard spines at you that are coated with poison. Uh, what are you doing? I'm collecting its poison glands. We can use those to produce other chemicals or to coat crossbow bolts. That's cool. Let's see if he has anything to trade. He stops working, sets it outside, and carefully removes his gloves. Of course. Mm, okay, he's got malatevs, which are kind of nice. Don't 
Do I have enough to get leather armor blueprint as well? Ooh, I barely have enough to get the leather armor blueprint. But all right, I'm 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 in. I'm in. Stuff all sucks, huh? He wants oh okay, you can get the yeah, the bolts too. I'll take I'll take seven of them, don't worry. Seven bucks. You must be monk. They call me Big Brett. So you pass all the tests. I see. Couldn't have been easy. They were just getting harder and harder in recent years. Damn, they were pretty hard, but I like challenges. I'm just really glad I made it. I think they were just the right difficulty. You wouldn't want to say one here, right? It was a breeze. They could have at least given me a day off. I've been running their tests for weeks. You're right. Indeed, we don't. So anyway, what can I do for you? Um, What is this place? This is the Agron... Agronomy, agronomy sector where we grow and harvest all kinds of plants but we also breed animals for food in short our job is to provide food for the station in any way possible if he wants to buy anything no he doesn't really want to buy anything combat gloves boots etc etc See. Maybe the engineering guy will want to buy these metal plates and stuff. Sounds like sounds like the right move. Harold. He does. Okay, so he'll buy that. He'll buy the knife the knife mold and that for twenty bucks. Okay. Well, Better than nothing. All right, let's go back down to the cave tunnel. I'm off into the caves. Let's go. And we'll see. As you approach the patches, you can see and hear faint squeaking sounds coming from up ahead and a pair of red beady eyes blinking in and out of the darkness. That's good. And that's always a good sign, I believe. Okay. So we're going to slow down the speed here. Just to make it a little bit easier. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh, this is not good. Nice. Okay. Well, at least I killed the t first two. No, so I'm pretty sure the whole point of this build is yeah to try and be unhittable and uh, run the hell away when you when you can after you hit them. Punch and dash, right? All right, we got some stuff here. This is good. We can sell this. Nothing in the junk pile. That's great. 
So these are the rat hounds he was talking about, and uh, the easiest thing to do is create choke points. Nice. Oh man, that sucks. All right. We're going to save pretty often. This game is kind of, uh, it could be kind of save scummy, but I mean, I don't know, it's hard. The first couple, like, I don't know, the start of the game when you're at your first couple levels, man, this game is freaking hard. So you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so I gotta pick that lock. Also, almost out of health hypo. That's not good. <laughs> like right when we start, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm out of everything. Wonderful. I don't, I'm not sure. I might want to move back a little bit. Oh yeah, they're coming. Oh loud, they coming. I think they'll run back over this way eventually. There we go. Come on, where are they? Oof. Okay, first death. First death, but it's not surprising. It's really not. We're playing on a really hard difficulty, so...
and this will be enough to get away. Okay, that's kind of scary. Just a little bit scary. Definitely I'm going to run out of health hypos, I can already tell. Nice. Alright, so this is what I want right here. That's good. Get all bunched up. I just sit here and wait. And they all ran away. Have them come to me. And just so you know, these are these are oddities, so it's a fancy rat hound deer. Pretty much like oddities give you, I don't know, like a little bit of insight into lore in the game or whatever. So this rat hound was sporting a small gold earring for some reason, which is kind of funny. This guy pierced here. So you can study them hex amount of times. It gives you XP when you study them, and there's a uh, oddities screen that will kind of fill up and show you which oddities you've found and everything. So it's kind of cool. All right, so here's that power generator he was talking about. Status off. Flux controller missing. So let's insert that. Let's turn it on, and it's operational. Biocorp setter. Whatever that is, okay. So there's another oddity and an electric lantern, which is actually kind of cool. We'll hit up the junk pile, the old junkaroonie pile. Nice, there's health hypos in here, which we really freaking need. Like, severely, severely. Okay, so let's sneak up on these guys here. Actually, we'll let them come to come to us, whatever. Hmm. Nice, okay. I'm taking all the the hides and stuff too because eventually if you sort these out we'll get like a decent quality one and we could probably make some leather armor and stuff because we've got the thing for it, you know. Then maybe we can find some padding or whatever.
We'll wait. Also, let's hit the power switch on this thing or we forget. Looking everywhere, doesn't look like there's anything crazy. I'm going to use all my bandages. I don't really want to because bandages are really good, but Oh boy. Okay, we got three of them. That's not good. So I'll probably just throw a Molotov. Okay, so we're just going to wait for the fire to kind of go out. Oh, they're not going to, they're just going to run away. Here we go. Okay. Oh, nice. That's not bad. Ooh. Son of a biscuit. Oh, there we go. That was that guy's watch. Nice. He's like, don't believe me, just watch. All right. So this is our first, like, boss or whatever that we're going to be fighting against. Um, Yeah, you can try and talk your way out of this dude being a douche nozzle, but really the best thing you can do is just throw a Molotov and hopefully kill these two. Or kill them, yeah. You have to be really careful with line of sight in this game too, because that guy can get you from like way out here, even if you think he can't. He actually probably gets you from here, so you want to break the line of sight completely each way, if possible. But anyway... We gotta wait. Let's wait and see if these uh, rat hounds will get in position. Let's save it while I'm right here, just so it's easier. Nice. Okay, so I think I can punch this one out. Yeah. And he's actually he's he's. Feared, too, so that's really good. Nice. Okay, he's dead. Nice. Okay, that was good. That was really good. That got pulled off kind of without a hitch. So we'll just sit here. Wait for the fire to go out. This guy is literally smoldering alive so that's good nice wholesome family content on this channel we got a chew toy oddity and old dog's chew toy Ooh, and we got the level up from that too nice this guy had health hypo crossbow knife it's not terrible uh, i don't have any hacking skills so that's not gonna help Let's see what's on the shelves nice more heals okay So let's level up real quick. Uh, probably going to go a little bit more in throwing, obviously more in melee, more in dodge, excuse me, more in evasion, more in tailoring. Uh, what do we take mechanics up to? I'll say, well, actually, throwing will go up to 30. 
So actually, we don't need to put any more in throwing. We're good in throwing. Um, dodge evasion, hacking, we can do. Um, mechanics, we go up to 40. Okay. So we could take some hacking if we needed to. Because for electronics, we need to create the taser. And I don't know how much that requires. But we'll take five just in case. It might be more than that. And no feats this time, so. Got a Psy Booster, Coal, another Oddity. Oh man. Well we can sell that stuff. It's not terrible. What do we need for the box? Fifteen hacking? I don't even have a Oh I do, I have a thing. But I can only do up to level five difficulty. Alright, I'll be right back.
<clears throat> okay. Sorry, bathroom break and then grab some food. You know how it goes. Alright, so I don't know. If, I think there is enemies down here. No? Okay, good. Okay, how are we going to play this one? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, we're just going to throw a grenade or a Molotov. That was actually pretty good, though. Because they're kind of like stuck. Nice. I'm about to be over encumbered, but we'll see. I'm getting I'm getting a little bit better at killing these guys, I'm getting a little bit faster as we level up. My weapons so you can take the mechanical repair kits here and just fix them like that. Nice, nice, okay. Making progress, making making slow but sure progress in dominating difficulty mode. Oh, is there a guy here? Fuck. There is. All right, I think I did it, man. Believe it or not. God willing, I think I did it. I 
I got the old geezer's watch back. Back again, what can old Jonas do for you, youngster? I think I found your watch. Yep, that's one. Where'd you find it? In the belly of a rat hound. He quirks an eyebrow. I know those things would devour anything, but a metal watch? So, can I have it now? There are a few special items I can offer you for it. He rummages through his backpack. I've got this here powerful submachine gun. Perfect working condition. I've got a set of healing hypos. Those are good for you. And I've got these here fine looking boots. Look at them. They are fine. Huh. Um, I'll take the gun. Thanks, bro. Okay, so let's go turn in the quest so we can get some, <clears throat> hopefully some money and XP, and then we'll start selling stuff too. Yeah, we got a decent amount of stuff to sell. <clears throat> he nods. Monk. I reactivated the power generator as well as some of the stations. Good work, Monk. We can start the restoration process. Here are your credits. Excellent. So what's next on the agenda? There are a few more jobs waiting for you, actually. Brett needs someone to do a hopper roundup. He'll instruct you on what exactly you need to do and how to do it. Go speak to him on the agronomy level. After you've completed this task, come and see me again. Okay, understood. So let's see if we can sell some stuff. I don't think he has anything I want. Because I can, like, make my own leather boots and stuff. Which, that's a nice thing about, you know, doing that. And I, I don't think you do tactical vests or anything in this one. I don't think this character uses pack vests. It's all leather armor and stuff and infused armor. So... That's pretty much it <clears throat> for him and you know, selling that stuff and then we'll go back to uh, Ezra. We'll see if he wants to do something. Monk. Monkey. Uh. Yeah, he'll buy the leather armor off of us. 
like the the recipe or whatever. I'm surprised you won't buy the hacking thing off of us. Hmm. This guy, oh, we'll keep Caltrops. You probably want those, man. It's freaking no joke. So I'll probably get the recycle item and the repair kit. Nice. These two are super important to have. Because then you can start, you know, you can get fabric scraps and stuff. I'll probably try to sell that. <clears throat> and the crossbow too, I don't know why. So these are like the only two things that I can really do. Okay. Um... Yeah, but for the repair kit, man, you start putting stuff in there and start scrapping stuff down, you can start making repair kits for your stuff. It's pretty important. This game does not mess around when it comes to uh, like keeping your stuff in good working condition. You just really don't want to like start having degraded quality of stuff. This guy will buy some leathers. See how many he'll buy. All right, let's sell it to him just to get it. You know. these two so you extract humor and process plant or fungus so when you do these it allows you to like take the adrenal gland and everything and you can if you have a high enough thing you can actually process them <clears throat> and same with the uh, plant I need some I need an amp ampule though I uh, got a couple vials he doesn't have any ampules though does he Hell no. There we go. Wait, so what are the vials for again? Oh, I think I think that I messed up. I'm actually gonna reload it. Here's why. <clears throat> that 30 credits actually, yeah, goes, goes a long way. So if you don't have the, yeah, the, I think the vials are, are for making ammo. That's what that's for. Yeah, my bad. Let's talk to Big Brett. I'm going to test having you with the Hopper Roundup. Very good. So say, have you ever captured a hopper? Yes, I have. Just give me the gear. No, I don't know what that is. No, but I did shoot a few. Say no. Ah, first go to the storage room. It's in the north. Oh, it's a room with two entrances. Just cross the hallway and get some dog crates. You'll need them to hold your quarry. 
Getting them inside won't be easy, though. As soon as they sense you're coming, they'll scurry off and crawl through the crevices in the cave wall. So what you need to do is immobilize them before they run away, either with hopper traps, which, unlike bear traps, will ensnare them without snapping most of their bones in half, or with throwing nets. Also, if you can handle a crossbow, you can try shooting them with tranquilizing bolts. A single shot will drop a hopper quickly and will allow you to capture it easily. Now you'll find all these and things in the storage room, and you're free to take as many as you need, but if you need more than what's in the storage room, then, well, I can only sell it to you. Your hunting ground is a mushroom cove. Head south from the crossroad, watch until you reach a waterfall, go past the waterfall, and take the western tunnel into a cave after it. Now you'll come across a big cavern with a lake. That's the cove. I need three healthy specimens. Good luck. Oh, and by the way, I've also sent a young man called Newton to catch some hoppers. It's been a while, so if you can find him and learn what's taking him so long. Who's Newton? Well, he's just like you, a newcomer who needs to learn the basics of what it takes for this station to operate. I've sent him to catch hoppers. He should have been back by now, though. I hope he hasn't gotten himself into some sort of trouble. So please, look for him while you're there. <clears throat> what is the Mushroom Cove? It's a place where a couple of streams and rivers join up to form a cove. From there, the water flows further down as Celeritis River which is joined by the other streams and rivers and becomes more and more treacherous as it journeys on. Presumably, it leaves straight down into deep caverns and ends in a magnificent waterfall, but I'm not sure I believe that. Why do you need more hoppers? It looks like you have plenty back there. Inbreeding makes hoppers susceptible to disease. It is necessary to freshen up the gene pool with new specimens as often as possible. Ooh. Alright, I'm going to get right on it. Whatever. All right, so let's see what they need here. Oh, I got flares. Got the hopper traps and the bolt. And the net. Okay. Let's go on down here. Actually, hold on. Let's see if they've got... Uh... I wonder if this guy's... Will he buy anything? No, I mean, he'll buy that, but... Whatever, I can sell that to him. He's gonna give me one. No way. I'm out on that. He doesn't have anything. I want to see if I can find something to make my uh, my armor better. I can craft some armor. Let's see what they got in the medical. Maybe this guy has some of the uh, ampules or whatever. Ampules, whatever they're called. Yeah, he does. He has a couple ampules. Okay, and it's actually cheaper. I can sell these to them. Nice. All right, so that gives me blood. A healthy blood sample it can be used in medical purposes. Right. Great. We're going to have to buy some grenades and stuff, man, to get through these. Oops. He doesn't have anything that I can use for that. All right. Well, that is like almost all of my money.
<laughs> it's like literally all my freaking money. Or eight grenades. Yeah, whatever. You gotta do it, man. You're tapped for money at the beginning, that's for sure. But you need the grenades to get through through the uh through all the side beetles and stuff. It's it's rough on dominating. It is super freaking rough. Oh yeah, this is the place I was at already, right? Hmm. Well, this definitely wasn't the way to go then, because there's freaking nothing here. And did I go north here? Hmm. Oh no, okay, here we go. I was confused. I was like, what the hell? Oh, two goes there. Monk, the new guy. He nods and takes his finger off the trigger. Yeah, I recognize you now. What are you doing out here? I've been instructed to run up some hoppers from the Mushroom Cove. Am I heading the right way? Yes, yes you are. It's just beyond this passage. Be careful, though. There are side beetles in the cove area. Do you do happen to see a young man go in the Mushroom Cove? Newton's the name. Yes, he went through here recently. I'd say about two hours ago or so. He said he was going to catch some cave hoppers. He hasn't returned yet, though. You mentioned side beetles. Yes, yeah, side beetles. Nasty buggers, especially if they're in a group, because that's when they start slinging powerful psionics at you. You know, if you haven't already, talk to old Jonas at the crossroads. He knows a lot about the creatures lurking in these caves and could give you some important tips. Who knows? It might save your life. In any case, stick to the eastern bank. You should be safe. Nasty buggers. Okay. Well, let's get the hell out of here. All right, so we need to set up set up a hopper trap. So we've got hopper traps here. Okay, he just ran right into it while I was setting it. That's good. Huh, dumbass. OK. 
Okay. And then I guess our last bet is to throw a net. Now, unfortunately, I'm not sneaky at all, so that's not going to work. Maybe if I get naked, they won't see me. I don't know. That's how you get it done. What? Oh, man. I want to try to kill some, too. Because I want to, uh... Ooh, he evaded it. Like now. All right, who's this guy here? Mordre. A middle-aged man, tall and wide shoulders, stands by the coast, smoking a cigar and observing the calm water. As you come near, he turns around. His eyes, you, oh, he eyes you for a moment, maintaining an indifferent expression. Then he speaks to you in a low, raspy voice. Don't stomp around, you're scaring the fish away. You're that guy that was running Tanner's test, right? Monk, was it? I guess you got admitted. Yeah, and who are you? The indifferent expression persists. I'd tell you that, but then I'd have to kill you. Just call me Mordry. In that case, Mordry will do. Good. What is this place? It's called Mushroom Cove. But it's basically a big lake where all these little streams converge and form this Celeritis River. It then runs all the way down to the very bottom of the deep caverns. Uh, how's the fishing going? Could be better. I was hoping to catch some deep eels, but I forgot to bring meat, and the eels don't care for worms much. You only use those if you want to drown them. Well, but, okay, tell me about the deep eels. There are many kinds of deep eels. Most are delicious and very easy to cook and eat. The blue eel is everyone's favorite, including me. 
The further you go down the Celeritis, however, the more dangerous eels you find. It's the very nature of this world of ours. The deeper you go, the more dangerous it becomes. Oh, uh, what kind of meat do you need? Any meat will do, but raw red meat works best. I can hunt down a hopper, but I cannot leave the rods unattended. I've got some meat right here. Sure, what can you offer? How about a health hypo? Yeah, I'll take it. Good. Now to catch some meals. Okay. What's that dude smoking? He's a smoker. He's like, yeah, I'm smoking. Smoking cigars, man, they're bad for you, okay? Okay, so this is where it's going to get a little crazy. Ah. <sighs> What? Are you serious, dude? Oh my gosh. Wow, I wasn't even doing damage to it? Oh boy. This is going to be a predicament, ain't it? Oh, man. I seriously didn't even do any damage to it. Okay. Well, let's see. All right, so I don't think I can imagine is like kill these things like by getting really freaking lucky. Oh yeah, there's no freaking way, because then this one's gonna come over and yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many of them. Yeah, okay, that's all right though. We'll just have to figure something else out with that. Because that's not good if you're doing no freaking damage. Obviously that's just like asking for disaster. Let's see what he wants to, if he's got something he can barter. Yeah, I think I want to do fishing. Yeah, we'll take up some fishing. Sure. 
Oh yeah, I have no money. Sorry, I'm broke. Huh. Well, yeah, maybe next time. So we don't actually have to go find that guy right away. Um, so I've got your hoppers. Excellent work. Here's your payment. So what would you like to name them? Um, oh, what would you like to name them? Sure. So what are we going to name them? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Athos, Porthos, and Aramis. I don't even know what those are. It's some, some kind of names, I'm sure. <clears throat> we'll go with breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Brett chuckles heartily. So be it. And what about Newton? I didn't see him. Please go back and look for him. I'm really worried now, and he's been out for hours. Who knows what could have happened? I will. Okay. Ooh, nice. I'm about to level up. I'm, like, really, really close to leveling up. Maybe I'll level up after I talk to this guy. Um, oh, okay. No, I guess not. Hmm. Well, let's do this. Oh, I'm new here. Name the Jack Quicksilver. All uh, right, where are you from, Jack? I'm not a citizen of any place, if that's what you're asking. I travel around a lot, but when I'm not on a train, I spend most of my time in Core City. What brought you here in the first place? A lucrative business opportunity, but it slipped past me, unfortunately. What happened with that business opportunity? It's a business secret. If you're interested in doing some work, though, there's something I can arrange. That's something I can arrange. Uh, what kind of work? Package delivery. I'll pay you in SGS credits. 100 pieces. You interested? Yeah. I'm broke, man. I need that money. He beckons you closer. You know where the GMS warehouse block is? No. Never mind then. Can't risk you getting lost with the package. Oh, come on, man. Okay, yeah, I'll lie to you. First, go to the barracks at the station platform here in the SGS. This key will open one of the foot lockers, and the package will be inside. He hands you the key. Take the package to the warehouse block to the building just south of the GMS compound. A man will be waiting for the package there, and you'll get your money. All right. We will not speak of this again until the job is done. A willowy woman removes her respirator as you approach to exhibit the smile beneath. You remember talking to her the first time you came here, but for some reason her name eludes you at the moment. If she even mentioned it at all. Her light soprano voice is quick to remind you, though. Hi, monk. Remember me? Essie. How's it going? Not too shabby. Not too shabby. You? Good. Decent. Got some stomach problems since I woke up, but I'll be better as soon as I take a nice walk. What? <laughs> That is decent. Well, you've been admitted to the station, so I reckon it can't be that bad, right? Right? So you need some help directions to be a bit more specific? Uh, nope. I'm good. Okay, bye. Useless. Okay, and here's why grenades are kind of OP.
Come on. Oh, they're coming. Oh, man. I need to get just like a little bit better of a grenade throw. Oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you kidding me, dude? Oh my god. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Oh, there's rat hound alphas too. That's good. I'm so dead. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh. Literally, like, right outside the first town. Like, you just... This game's ridiculous. What? Oh, I do it's done for. They must have killed that dude. I'm going to try to bring them all over here and hit them with a grenade again. This is fucking ridiculous how many of them there are. Oh man, these guys are so hard. All right, let's do, let's put a Molotov there. Maybe that'll be like a better option for throwing at the um, Rat Hound. <clears throat> that actually worked out pretty decently. So, let's see what we level this up to.
So we want to go probably do the 10 agility. So go that, and then should we say we should take Grenader? Okay, so we actually need to have yeah, you need the base. Okay. I wonder how much the taser, how much it is. Hmm. Well, let's see. doesn't really say I'm gonna go with 10 just to be safe okay Gotta get lucky and like get him in a bunch. Okay, let's see how we're gonna do this here. Cause this could get really this is like this gets really dangerous really fast. That's decent. Beard all of them.
Um, so I probably need to unload these. Man, I need more um, Molotovs because I'm out now. I got kind of lucky with them getting uh, getting phobied by the by the fire at the end there. Like a big part of that was luck. <laughs> All right, that's good. There's two of them over here. Line of sight. Uh, do I want to heal? Yeah, I kind of have to. And then there is that guy with the hammer. He just kind of came out of nowhere, but he might be up here. I might be able to, yeah, yeah, 
Okay, there he was. So if I break his line of sight by going around here, I might be okay. Oh, man. It's not great. Nope, I'm dead. Man. It's rough. Okay, I got lucky with that one. I'm overweight too. Huh. <clears throat> So what I'll do is I can take these, the lower quality ones, and I'll just kind of dump these off for right now. So that way I'm not fully over encumbered. I feel like this is still pretty low level to be coming around here too, but... Stairs up. And we'll report back to this guy, tell him what we found. Tell him how it was all crazy. Um, ah, uh, okay. I've actually got to go in there, I think, and fight the guy that's in there. So I'll do that real quick before I uh, stop streaming. Oh yeah, here we go.
my gosh. You gotta be kidding me, this guy's got two health left. Okay. Wow, and he left me with three health left. <laughs> Stupid. Absolutely ridiculous. Hopefully I don't get in a fight with anything because I can get free heals from the doctor. Then I'll cut the stream once I report back to this guy.